time, the official party will take their post. Now taking their positions in the reviewing area are the 5th Armored Brigade Commander, Colonel Paul Garcia, and the incoming commander, Colonel Martin Schnitt. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors. Today, Major General Peterson is conferring honors to the soldiers and family members of the 5th Armored Brigade. Today's city battery is provided by Alpha 2nd, 3rd Field Artillery, 1st Brigade Combat Team, 1st Armored Division. The detachment officer in charge is 1st Lieutenant Kane, and the detachment sergeant is Sergeant 1st Class Leatherman.
this time, Major General Peterson will join Colonel Garcia and Colonel Schmidt for the passing of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the National Anthem. Soldiers would follow the standard or guidelines of their leader, most often found 
or edge of the battle. In more recent times, colors represent not only the heritage and history of the unit, but also the unity and loyalty of its soldiers. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there also are the colors. Passing of the unit colors represents the transfer of authority and responsibility for the unit from one commander to another. By authority of paragraph 2 5 Bravo, AR 600 20, the undersigned assumes command of the 5th Armor Brigade, 1st Army, effective 10 July 2018, signed Martin J. Schmidt, Colonel, Special Forces Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General of the Longhorn Division, 1st Army, Fort Hood, Texas, Major General Eric C. Peterson. Good morning, friends. It's an absolute honor to have such a distinguished group of colleagues and families here as we transfer command of the Dagger Brigade from one outstanding Army professional, Colonel Paul Garcia, to another, Colonel Marty Schmidt. Major General White, Brigadiers General Yeager, Davis, Lawrence, Bellinger, Team Bliss leaders. Uh, and I'm really, really appreciative of the incredible outpouring of uh, support from Team Bliss partners. You really have something special going on here. Leaders, neighbors, and, and above all, the great soldiers, leaders, and soldiers of family, uh, Fifth Armor Brigade, welcome. And uh, a special welcome to the extended uh, Garcia and Schmidt families and friends, some of who traveled a great distance to be here. The 338th Army Band, U.S. Army Reserve out of Detroit, Michigan, and uh, Columbus, Ohio. 23FA, the Sloop Battery, uh, Alpha Battery. Thanks for adding a touch of class to the ceremony. Uh, appreciate your teamwork and collaboration to put all this together. To say that this Dagger Brigade has been doing some heavy lifting for the past two years of Colonel Paul Garcia's command would be a significant understatement. Clear to all of us in uniform, our nation and our Army's leadership are placing increased emphasis on our credible military readiness. To include a growing reliance on our Army Reserve and Army National Guard. The simple fact is the Army cannot accomplish its increasingly complex global mission without our Reserve component teammates. This new normal places increased demand on units like 5th Armor Brigade and their vital mission of building reserve component readiness and deploying reserve component units across the globe. For the past two uniquely intensive years, the soldiers of the Dagger Brigade have been out there partnering with Army National Guard and Army Reserve leadership, advising, assisting, training, and validating reserve component formations to achieve directed readiness requirements. They've done this through multi-component integrated collective training and focused mo post-mobilization and pre-mobilization training and validation, enabling ForceCom to provide combatant commanders with trained and ready forces in support of worldwide requirements. As we continue to ask so much of our total Army, all components, the experience, confidence, and proficiency of our reserve components gain in their engagements with the 5th Armors Professionals leads to success in combat and contingency operations. The bottom line is that well-led professional teams like this 5th Armor Brigade are absolutely essential in providing proficient ready forces to combatant commanders. The criticality of 5th Armor Brigade's mission is illustrated in part by its work over the past two years. Specifically, the 5th Armor Brigade masterfully executed pre-mobilization, post-mobilization training and validation of over 37,000 deploying soldiers representing Army National Guard and Army Reserve units, and over 22,000 individual replacements, Department of Defense civilians and contractors through the CONUS Replacement Center. 
all in support of global contingencies in every combatant command area of responsibility. The unit's soldiers and civilians trained by the 5th Armor Brigade range from small detachments to entire brigades, and they are excelling in the conduct of their mission in some of the most complex, dynamic, and lethal combat theaters. The 5th Armor Brigade also provides substantial leadership, insight, and advice to our Army-wide efforts to improve and expand our capacity for rapidly mobilizing reserve component forces. A vital strategic effort that reduces national security risk and provides our nation's leadership with credible options. While doing so, this high-performance team also invested in relationships with their reserve component leaders at all levels, with their valued installation and enterprise partners here at Team Bliss and Division West enablers, with their enthusiastic supporters and advocates from the surrounding communities, not the least of which is the special relationship that the Dagger Brigade has with the El Paso Independent School District, the Canotillo School District, and the Isleta School District. Um, great teamwork and camaraderie supporting the entire community there. They've also overcome substantial organizational friction, professionally and adeptly adjusting to the first Army-wide reorganization known as Operation Bold Shift. And if that wasn't enough, Paul and the team led our recent effort to mobilize and deploy the Army National Guard's 155 Armored Brigade Combat Team out of Mississippi and Kansas. Our largest, most complex mobilization effort ever. Paul's leadership and experience were invaluable as he quarterbacked the extensive team of Bliss and Enterprise Partners who made this mobilization and training possible. To accomplish all this, Paul skillfully led, trained, and employed incredible 13 battalions that you see represented before you, both regular Army and U.S. Army Reserve, arrayed across the greater southwestern region of the United States. Paul, you've led with unparalleled wisdom and unwavering determination, not only accomplishing a relentless, daunting mission with alacrity, but also in substantially improving our greater capability along the way. Through your personal example and your mature, steady leadership style, you established a command climate that inspired and enabled initiative and excellence. You set the standard for teamwork and collaboration and problem solving, and you showed all of us how trust, transparency, and communication help us punch above our weight. Paul, you lead the brigade much better than you found it, with conditions set to continue to improve. A selfless leader can do no better. We certainly realize that you didn't accomplish this alone, and I'd like to offer sincere thanks to Melinda, Aaron, and Karina for your teamwork, your commitment and sacrifice on behalf of our mission, soldiers, and families. And gladly, it's not farewell to the Garcias. They're staying here with Team Bliss at the home of America's Tank Division, and they're joining Joint Task Force North as Paul will begin duties as the new Deputy Commander. Colonel Marty Schmidt, Jody, Justin, Alexis, Victoria, welcome to the Division West team. Marty, you join us with an exceptionally exceptional professional reputation and a strong foundation of diverse, current, and relevant experience, not the least of which is your recent distinguished service as the Donovan Group Director of U.S. SOCOM's Future Studies and Innovation Cell. We're happy to have you here, Marty. The Dagger Brigade is in very capable hands, and I know that you will continue to build on and improve the capabilities of this great team. Again, our very most sincere welcome. In closing this morning, as we recognize this great transition and celebrate this magnificent team, I ask that we keep in mind the tens of thousands of our comrades, those we've trained, our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors, forward in harm's way, doing their duty with distinction and courage. First in the West, first in D. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing commander of the 5th Armored Brigade, Colonel Paul N. Garcia. At this time, Alpha 2nd 3rd Field Artillery, Sergeant First Class, Bellevue, the NCYC of the Sioux Battle, present Colonel Garcia with a ceremonial Sir, canister from the last round fire during August. Uh, General, General, Mrs. Peterson, General, and Mrs. Uh, White, 
Brigadiers uh, General Bellinger, Lawrence, Yeager, Davis, Colonel Promotable Cole, all of our local Fort Bliss partners, distinguished visitors, and then uh, fellow brigade commanders, colonels, command sergeant majors, and then most importantly, the friends and family of the 1st Armor and Dagger Brigade. Uh, thank, thank you for coming out on this beautiful day here in West Texas. I, I, you know, I was kind of praying, chaplain, that we'd have some inter divine intervention and I, we got it. Uh, I don't think we've had a morning like this in a long time. So uh, nice uh, 80 degrees with, with some cloud cover. Uh, thank you, Lord. Before I begin, I'd like to thank uh, the, the 338th, as the CG mentioned, Army Reserve Band out of Michigan and Ohio. Not sure who came up with that, that team, but uh, kind of a different mix of states. But for their incredible contributions to the team of teams, it's only fitting that we have a United States Army Reserve Band here today. Just ideal that you were on your two-week AT, or uh, yeah, your AT period. You all truly sound amazing. I couldn't think of a better way to cap this day off than with you here uh, with us today. I'd also like to thank the Salute Batter from 23FA and our incredible teammates from the CRC for the beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. And lastly, to the leaders and teammates from the brigade that put this change of command together, led by my, my great battle buddy, Command Sergeant Major Brian Barker. Thank you, absolutely well done. You all look, truly look amazing. Please, everyone, join me in a big round of applause for all these great professionals. Now, with all that, I, th I think I'm already on a full page of my speech, so uh, about six more to go. Star Major Lair out here. He, yeah, there you are. I, I apologize up front. It's going to be a little long. Uh, I'm going to speed this up, though, and try to get it uh, to my point here. Plus, uh, I know really nobody's going to really pay attention to what I'm saying today uh, or remember anything I said. So I'll focus on telling a story and then really getting down to saying thank you. Stories about probably the least understood and most underappreciated group of truly great Americans that you see before you here today. I remember two years ago when I was out here with uh, Colonel, then Colonel Jay Gallivan, I stood in front of a podium down the street like this and, and he, he rattled off uh, a list of accomplishments that was truly amazing that this brigade accomplished. That list has grown, as the CG mentioned, and the requirements have only become more complex. This 13, count them out there, Battalion Brigade represents total Army force policy 24-7, 365 days a year. Before us today, we have members of the active Army, United States Army National Guard, United States Army Reserve Command. It includes five active duty battalions, three mobilized reserve battalions from the 85th Reserve Support Command, one mobilized reserve battalion, which is our CRC out of the 80th Training Command, and four remaining what we call a TPU or Troop Program Unit Reserve Battalions that are scattered from as far as Arizona out to East Texas. What this team did this past year as, a, as an example was prepare, train, coach, teach and mentor and validate, then redeploy over 32,000 plus soldiers, airmen, sailors, civilians and contractors in support of every combatant command out there. This includes units deploying to Kosovo, Sinai, Ukraine, Africa, Afghanistan, Guantanamo Bay, Central America, Eastern Europe, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, and everything in between, just to name a few. They do this every day, working most holidays, weekends, and that thing that everyone calls a Donza, that I, I'm not sure what that really is, <laughs> to ensure these personnel are ready for their assigned mission. When they're not training, they're a forward in these places that I mentioned conducting site surveys to ensure that they have the latest from the region or they're out at the unit's location across the United States during pre-mobilization training to ensure that they are getting everything that they need prior to their arrival here at Fort Bliss. They do their jobs truly selflessly day in and day out and they do it very well without any fanfare and without, with very little recognition. But of course it takes a village to pull this off and I have so many to thank on behalf of the Brigade and First Army. I'll start first with our great division leadership provided by our CG, uh, Major General Peterson and his CSM, Command Sergeant Major McDuar. For, sir, we have, we have been blessed with two great uh, command teams. First, Major General Colt and Sergeant Major Dillingham. 
who provided solid counsel and guidance for my first year in command. I don't think, I didn't think it was possible to get much better, but can honestly say that having you through the second year, especially with the 155 ABCT on the ground, was truly a blessing. Thank you, Sergeant Major McDwyer, for your calm leadership that allowed us to make honest mistakes and learn from them every day. You, you epitomize the tenets of Mission Command and all you do. Thank you for your trust in the team and the support to our families and troopers at every turn. To the 1 AD team led by Major General White and Sergeant Major Day, thank you for your trust and support. You fostered an environment of true collaboration and teamwork in all that you do and it has been an absolute pleasure serving on this installation for the past two years under your command. Without the support from my brother brigade commanders in 1 AD, there is absolutely no way we could have pulled this mission off. I want to send a special thanks out to uh, the long departed uh, Michael Laylor from the 1 AD Sustainment Brigade and his team that performed absolute miracles literally every day in support of the 155 ABCT. To my garrison commander brothers, Mike Hester and to Steve Murphy, thanks for all you and your team of teams do that run this enterprise that allow us to train. I can honestly say that your job is probably, no, it's definitely the only other job on this installation that I wouldn't want to change out with. <laughs> to my enterprise partners out there, which include William Beaumont Army Medical Center, Colonel Eric Rude, uh, to the LRC, to DPW, to the RSG, the three RSG commanders, Tucker Wilson, Dominic Wybe, and now Javier Rivera, and our MSU brothers and sisters, thank you for what you do every day to keep this machine called mobilization and demobilization going. You do this with professionalism and cooperation every day, selflessly, without much appreciation for the long hours and days that you work to take care of our troops. To our training partners across the installation of the Army, to include the Joint Modernization Command, 32nd AAMDC, 263rd AAMDC, 7th ATC, and the great three, third of the 353 out of Fort Polk, thank you for all you do to support these thousands of deploying soldiers annually. And lastly, to the parent organization of the seven of these 13 great battalions, the 85th Army Reserve Support Command under Brigadier General Bellinger, thank you, ma'am, to you and your team for all that you do there at Arlington Heights to take care of our citizen soldiers and their families. Your soldiers bring diversity in the form of background and job skills that truly complete this team. In our formation today, we have lawyers, teachers, medical professionals, school administrators, engineers, and teachers, to name a few. They are what are making our country so great, and they bring so much to the plate. And now to the soldiers, to you all out there of this truly great 5th Armored Brigade, the four brigade CSMs I've had the pleasure to serve with, the Royals, Celestine, Williams, and Barker, thank you for your candid and professional leadership each day and personal counsel to take care of the mission and our soldiers. The Lord knows truly that I need a lot of help, and he has delivered that in spades with great right arms that he's provided me in this brigade. To our staff of quiet professionals, too numerous to mention, you are the true heroes and it is not lost on me the long number of hours that you work each day to accomplish the task. To the 28 battalion commanders and 25 battalion CSMs I've had the pleasure to serve with in this command, can only hope I gave back a portion of what you have given me in this brigade over the past two years. Major General Cole used to use the analogy of juggling flaming chain chainsaws on a tightrope without a net to describe what you all do every day. You all epitomize professionalism, duty, and discipline in the manner in which you have performed your duties. I'm reminded of something our 31st Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, General Cody, said a few years back. He commented on the ongoing fight in Afghanistan and Iraq to a group of leaders. He said, do not measure one's contributions to this fight in terms of proximity to violence. General Cody, Cody recognized the contributions of the total force in generating, preparing, and training our soldiers for the rigors of combat. Contributions of this great formation before you today are significant, and I am honored to have served with each one of you in this endeavor. Now to the personal side of the equation, we all know that none of this can be accomplished without our families. They provide the support and foundation that allows us to do the things that are so much greater than ourselves. To, to my father, who is here today, 
and my mother, who is watching from above, thank you for instilling the example of service. Dad, your example of taking care of mom for the past several years has taught me the true meaning of selfless service and loyalty. On this day today, which would have been your 52nd wedding anniversary, I can only say thank you for all that you have, you have done for us. To my mother-in-law, Lucy, thank you for all that you do for, for the kids and our family. You are the only mother-in-law out there that I can honestly say after a six-week stay <laughs> is, not, uh, is not getting kicked out of the house. <laughs> it is truly always good having you around, and you bring so much to our family, and I thank you for all you do. To my wife, my beautiful wife, uh, going on 23 years, I don't, I don't know how you do it all. Thank you for all that you do for our soldiers and our families across the brigade hunt and installation, and most importantly, what you do to take care of our family. I truly would not be able to do this without your love and devotion, and I know I owe you big time for what you've endured, especially for the past four months. You keep us all straight, and, and I really don't know how any of this happens without you. I love you, hon. To Aaron and Karina, thank you for being such special kids. You make it easy on me, your mom may disagree with that, but I love you both, and I'm so proud of what you have accomplished in your lives. And as I close out today, I want to thank, uh, I want to welcome Marty and Jody Schmidt and their three kids. Marty, you and Jody will enjoy the incredible opportunity. My only counsel to you is to trust your leadership, and they will amaze you at every turn. Melinda and I wish you all the best and know that you will enjoy your stay here at Fort Bliss and take this brigade to the next level. And I feel very confident uh, I've left it in great hands. With that, uh, this is Dagger 6, ancient, leaving the net. Daggers, first in the West, first indeed, Army Strong. Brigade, Colonel Martin J. Smith. Well, the good news is, is I actually Googled how long my speech is supposed to be, so it's going to be quick. Uh, to Major General and Mrs. Peterson, Major General and Mrs. White, Brigadier Generals Bellinger, Davis, Yeager, and Lawrence, Command Sergeant Major and Mrs. McGuire, fellow command teams, friends and family of the 5th Armored Brigade, thank you for, for attending today's ceremony. To the gun battery, thank you very much for uh, shooting today, and to the band with the phenomenal job. I've heard of uh, houses divided, but bands divided is a new, is a new one for me. Uh, and I gotta say, go Buckeyes. Uh, Jody and I would like to thank the city of El Paso and the Fort Bliss team for their gracious and hospitable welcome to the area. It's been truly remarkable. Major General Peterson and Command Star Major McGuire, thank you for this humbling opportunity to command. I look forward to the integrating with your team in Army West. To Paul and Melinda, thank you for the phenomenal transition. It's comforting to know that we have friends and family living just down the street. And oh, Paul, keep your phone handy. I'm going to be I'm going to be using it. Uh, to my wife Jody, son Brian, daughter Alexis, and Victoria, thank you thank you for allowing me to do what I do and being the most important part of this journey. I love you. To the men and women of Fifth Armor Brigade. I'm truly impressed with what you do for our Army. There is no more important CONUS-based mission set than the 5th Armor Brigade. I'm extremely proud to be a member of the team. Thank you. This is Dagger 6 signing on to the net.
Headquarters and Headquarters Company, commanded by Captain Tyler Hash, Unit First Sergeant. Colonel Adrian Jackson, Command Sergeant Major Shannon Crony. The 1st 360th Infantry Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Mark Giacchiovelli, Command Sergeant Major Cordell Gilliard. The 1st 361st Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Terrence Latson, Command Sergeant Major Jose Riviera Riviera. The 2nd 362nd Field Artillery Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Walker, Command Sergeant Major Dwayne McCorkin. The 3rd 362nd Armor Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Hall, Command Sergeant Major Jabari Williams. The 5th Armored Brigade Color Guard is led by the Brigade Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Brian D. Barker. The 3rd, 410th Brigade Engineer Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Weicker, Command Sergeant Major Jason Dodge. The 1st, 382nd Logistical Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel James Olson, Command Sergeant Major Irma Banks. The 3rd 337th Training Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Fred Grossman, Command Sergeant Major Reginald Sterling. The 1st 364th Training Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Sean Malis, Command Sergeant Major Keith King. The 2nd 290th Training Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Marsh, Command Sergeant Major Timothy Rogers. The 2nd 363rd Training Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Vicki Binstock, Command Sergeant Major Joan Zulek. The 3rd 361st Training Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Robert Dia, Command Sergeant Major Larry Stromer. The 1st 289th Training Support Battalion, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel David Graves, Command Sergeant Major Robert Whitmore. 